PTC Creo Parametric 3.0 Lesson 6 Part 2. The second model that we're going to create for the assembly is the clamp ball. So start off by clicking New and I'm just going to give it a quick name. And it's a revolved part and it has a similar shape to the internal cut that we did on the foot. So in this particular case, the only thing you really may want to do is go in and change the uh, follow the steps and and add anything that needs to be done. Manage the session. Let's prepare model properties. We're going to have inches still. <clears throat> Material in this case here, I think is nylon. You do want to make sure that you open up your options file again and import. And any changes that the book suggests. We're going to go right into the modeling of it. And let me scroll down a little bit. Um, one of the things we will change is the model tree. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to change the, uh, we'll look at the tree filters, turn everything on. Just so we get used to doing that. And let's also go and change the columns. <clears throat> so we can add a few items here, the ID, the internal ID, the feature number, type, variety of things that you might want to put on there. And when you do it, it'll actually add some columns here for the model tree. Now we don't want it to take up too much graphic space, but you can get an idea of what you can have readily available. So we have an internal ID number too. So in this case, you're going to just have to drag the navigator window as close as it will go. And it'll keep the tree up and it'll show you the feature number. <clears throat> So the first feature we're going to create is a revolved feature. And again, we're going to sketch on the right datum plane. You got your Z going down. Right mouse button. We could put in a center line. Actually, I don't usually put the axis of revolution in first, but let's, let's do it here. In this case here, sometimes I bring in the section. And if you click on palette, <clears throat> excuse me, you should, if you're in the right directory, you should have the previous section. And if you remember, I called it the ball end. Yours might be called ball dash underscore end. And double click and then drag and put it somewhere on your screen. Now, when you do that, you're just going to place it anywhere on your screen and then you're going to move the position of the drag handle so that you can put it in a spot that you can lock it into one of the references easier. So we're going to take this with your right mouse button and put it up in the corner here. And then we're going to take this one and put it here. And you can get it fairly close if you want. Don't worry about the distance here with it. And as far as our scale goes, I think we want to change our scale. 0.75 is the scale, they said. To two. Okay, so we have two inches, or I should say two times scale. Hit enter. Uh, check. And close. And we want to make this, let's make it zero. Now, the one thing we want to do is we want to get rid of that zero dimension. I just moved it closer. If I can click on coincident and I can click on the bottom line, move the cursor a little bit, hit my right mouse button, and select the edge. So I'm selecting the 
reference the, as the the edge of the datum plane and the bottom line, making them coincident. So now I've got this zero dimension, and I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to take it off. Now the sizes here are fairly close to our design sizes that we need. One of the things, though, is we have a diameter here, and we do want that as a dimension. We could click on that, and we could click on this one here, right mouse button, and well, let's do one at a time. Let's just make it strong. Well, I want to lock it. Let's do this to start off with right mouse button dimension. Select the reference. Go to the center point, middle mouse button. So now we have the design dimensions that are required. That's important that we don't worry about the actual values yet. We want to eventually alter them to have the design values, which are over here. So 0.875, we're fairly close. And we have 1.5 and we have 0.75. So 0.75. And we have 1.25. Let's see if I'm getting this right. 1.5. So this is our ball. Come back. Check. Let's go into our shaded with edges. And we have our one feature. Now, by bringing in the section like we did, we didn't have to do the sketch over. We just had a saved sketch, basically, and brought it into this particular feature because it had a similar shape. Check. And then again, as we always do, go and put a color on it. Looks okay. It's a little dark. One of the problems with these coloring is that if you if you want to highlight something and select it, here green shows up, but there's when it's red, it may not show up very good. So again, as usual, I, I'm going to mess around with my colors and make it a lot lighter. And you can see the reflection on this one too. It's pretty bright. I'll leave it like that for now. All right. We have black edges on it. It's really got a high re reflectivity on it. So I'm going to turn it around, look at the bottom here, and we're going to insert a hole, threaded hole. So it's a standard hole, and it's a half inch 13. So start off by clicking on the hole tool, selecting the axes, and hold down the control key and select the surface to start. And this time we're going to Create a standard hole, UNC, go down to 1 half 13. It has a depth to it. I think we're going to put a chamfer on it, a little big. And we click on shape here. We get our dimensions. So we have 90. This is, uh, let's go 0.375. See if it takes it. And we have this one for the chamfer. Ninety for the angle. And that's about it. And our depth of the hole. is 0.5. Anything else changed? No, it looks like it's pretty much the same. All right, so we've got our threaded hole. Click on check. And here's a place where it would have been nice with our colors. 
let's edit this and see what we've got. See, it won't give us a transparency on this. I'm going to go to generic. Not and even that won't either. Let's make it so it's a little bit transparent so we can see the internal structure here. And again, if you want, you can always come up and you can uh, add a color to the inside here. Like so. If you turn off your shading, you'll see something a little bit different. Let's keep on hidden line. You'll see that there's actually a magenta surface. And you can see that the hole, it's got a note on it. And here's our note. And if you notice under the tree filters, we turned on annotations. So you want that on so you can see it in the model tree. So it's tapped hole. And if we go over to view again and we turn off our annotation display, we can toggle that off. Now, if you want to select it from the screen, many times you have to come down here, turn on the filter to annotations, select it, right mouse button, go to properties. And you'll see it's got a huge note that's been created. Some of the stuff is kind of silly. It's not necessary. It doesn't have a pattern. So we could delete that. Thread series and thread class. Hole type. Thread depth. said enter and put that on another line and normally you don't tell the drill machinists get mad at you if you tell them too much they know more than you well, I didn't do a very good job I got to get rid of a couple of things on here and you can alter it and make it look correct as for your as far as your standards go How about hold type standard hold type let's take out that thread class and click on OK. So there you have the the note you have your depth. The thread is 0.375, the hole is 0.5. So you can alter it. You can also alter this when you're in the drawing mode. You don't have to do it here. Now next thing is we have a couple of extra little features and go to the model tab and I can't click on anything. Well, except for this, which means that my filter is still on annotation. So I'm going to go back over to Smart. And <clears throat> I want to put a chamfer here on the top edge. I'll just leave the standard one. And then, then the other one, I'm going to click on the, a feature, move my cursor a little bit, select it, and I'm going to put a round. But I do want you to see that there's other options here. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to click on the round tool. And I'm going to click on the surface. And then the other, hold down my control key, hit the other surface. And I expand it out and back. So there's a little bit different. Surface to surface is another way of creating a round. Now undo that one let's try one more round let's click on surface and um, let's click on the edge remember to hold down your control key so that's surface to edge and i'm going to keep that one i like the way it looks control d now if i double click on the first feature i'm going to see some of the dimensions, a diameter in this one. And if I click on a dimension, right mouse button, properties, I can move that dimension so that it's pictorially in a better position. So 
I can see it a little bit clearer on the on the pictorial here on the uh, standard orientation, which is our triometric at this point. So let's see else what else we covered in here. We did our properties. Um, I didn't really do everything for my note. Let's go back to the note and let's see if I got it. No. So I'm going to go back to my smart. Well, before I do that, how about taking it off the hole here? The properties. And here you can see the note. And we have, um, <clears throat> actually, I took out too much, but I'm just going to show you how to put a symbol in there. For instance, let's say it's a diameter symbol. And I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, you don't want to build a note. Now, this is incorrect, of course, the depth symbols there. But you don't want to build a note out of just typing. <clears throat> Putting symbols isn't one thing. But these items here, these are not every all the characters. They're not just, um, they're actually selected and for that particular note from the size of the features for the actual whole. And what I mean by that is, if we go back to smart, it looks like it's on smart. As the whole itself, if we go back into the edit the definition of that whole, back into the command, you can look at the properties here. And all this information is embedded in that for you. Here's the note. And you can see we did make some changes in here already. And you have the shape. And of course, you have the placement tab. But these are important to understand that you're actually building a database of information. In this case here, all the standard threads and everything are part of what's given to you when you're using a standard hole from the ribbon. Middle mouse button to come out out of there. So follow the steps in the book. It's pretty much everything we've covered. It's just making sure that you try these different text things when you're working with the notes and that. The, uh, you've got a lot of variations. I'll go back to annotation, select on it, right mouse button, properties. A lot of information in here that you want to take a look at. Um, and let's go back to text style. And you can actually change the text style of that also. Okay, so make sure you save it. And this concludes Lesson 6, Part 2, the clamp ball.